Another well-known Ukrainian unit has joined the Kursk operation. As Forbes writes, the 501st Marine Battalion of Ukraine was seen on video. Its fighters were tearing down a Russian flag in one of the region's populated areas. The battalion's 400 or so Marines are at the forefront of combat missions, the unit stated. But it wasn't always that way. The 501st has a sad history of avoiding combat. In that sense, the Kursk campaign is an opportunity for redemption, Forbes adds. The publication recalled that this battalion was part of the Crimean garrison. However, when the Russians invaded the peninsula and Ukrainian troops were leaving this territory, only 64 Marines of this battalion joined them. Hundreds of their brothers in arms voluntarily remained in Crimea, effectively siding with the Russian occupiers. The Ukrainian Defense Ministry has reactivated the 501st Marine Battalion. In the first months of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, its fighters joined the garrison in Mariupol on the Black Sea coast. Russian troops laid siege to Mariupol, mercilessly starving and bombing the city's garrison and civilians. The main garrison, more than 2,000 people, held out for three months, eventually retreating to the Azovstal steel plant and then finally surrendered in late May 2022 when food, ammunition and medicine ran out, the publication says. However, even here, Forbes writes, the 501st Marines were not among the last to continue the defense of the city. They left in early April, six weeks before the defenders of Azovstal. As explained, without coordination with neighboring forces, about 270 Marines abandoned their positions and weapons and went into Russian captivity. We want to avoid casualties and bloodshed. I'm tired of seeing people die. Konstantin Besmertny, a senior lieutenant with the 501st Marine Battalion, told Russian state media after the mass surrender. As a result of these actions, Ukrainian authorities have launched an investigation into the unauthorized surrender of the Marines, focusing on Basmutny and another high-ranking officer. Over the past two years, about 20 Marines have returned to Ukraine as part of a prisoner exchange. However, about 250 remain in Russia. Now, the 501st Marine Battalion, destroyed in Mariupol, has been restored again with new officers and soldiers. It entered the battle in 2023, first in the Kherson region, and this summer they were transferred to the Kharkiv region to defend Vovchansk. Last week, the 501st Marine Battalion apparently moved 160 kilometers between Vovchansk and Kursk as the Ukrainian invasion force extended its control past the town of Sudza, 10 kilometers from the Russian-Ukrainian border. With the battalion's arrival, the invasion force now includes troops from the army, airborne assault forces, territorial forces and marines. The newspaper concludes. Прапор Украины! Слава Украине! Героям слава! Давай, брат! Служу украинскому народу! Честь! Russian President Vladimir Putin promised that poorly trained conscripts would not be sent to fight in Ukraine. However, the front line has now crossed into Russian territory and families of conscripts stationed in the Kursk region are sounding the alarm about their loved ones. Dozens of messages from people claiming to be family members of Russian conscripts who went missing in the Kursk region are circulating on various social networks. As CNN writes, messages on Russian Telegram channels over the past few days have shown how unprepared Russia was for such an attack. When tanks attacked the border at 3 in the morning, there were only conscripts there defending themselves. They didn't see a single contract soldier. They didn't see anyone at all. 
My son called later and said, Mom, we're in shock, wrote the mother of a conscript soldier from the Kursk region. In addition, the Russian news outlet Verstka published an interview with Natalia Appel, the grandmother of one of the Russian conscripts who served in Kursk and is now considered missing. She said her grandson, Vladislav, was stationed unarmed in a village 500 meters from the border. What could the boys do? Go against Ukrainian soldiers with a shovel? She said. As CNN notes, the fact that Russia relied on conscripts to defend its border likely explains why Ukrainian forces were able to advance into Russian territory with such apparent ease. Unlike professional soldiers, conscripts receive only limited training before being sent into service as they are prohibited by law from being sent abroad and are not intended to participate in combat. Instead, Russia often deploys them on the border. But when Ukraine launched its recent surprise invasion, these conscripts suddenly found themselves on the front lines completely unprepared to defend themselves.